No, but any time and they can and look up. at the definition. Look at the definition that I said. I made sure to say that she was not fighting. If someone is not carrying, even a soldier, even a soldier, a very strong, powerful man who's not carrying a sword to fight the Muslims, the Muslims are obligated not to kill him because he was not fighting them in a battlefield. So <coughs> the justifications is the enemy of Muslims. And subhanAllah, is it easy to wrap myself around with a dy dynamite and go kill innocent civilians, women and children, than to unite the Muslims of 57 countries and stand up to the Israeli occupation? It's very hard. Yeah. Um, <coughs> any other questions? Any other questions? Any written down questions? If you want to pass it forward, so we can take those as well. Question? No? Yes, but yeah. um, this question was asked um, about you know, there's always a guy who's around college Ave, you know, uh, preaching. Yes. Um, and he asked a group of Muslims, he talked about how the Prophet was possessed by a jinn. And um, that whole story about how the prophet um, was possessed by a jinn uh, early in his uh, in his lifetime. And I personally, at that time, I didn't know th that story. I, There's no, I the story is totally not true. Okay. Uh, actually, one of the uh, earliest biographers of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Ibn Ishaq. Ibn Ishaq came before the time when Al Imam Al Bukhari and Imam Muslim and their students actually founded the science of testable evidence, which is genius one. For example, Imam al-Bukhari uh, to say that this quote was said by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He memorized the entire biography of 2,000 people. Where they were, at what date, at what town, and what they said, and whom they met, and whom they did not meet. And he would actually travel from town to town and ask people to make sure that this person is the most credible person and truly he was in a time and place to say this to the other person, to say this to the other person, so we know exactly that this hadith was done. And that's why, you know, Sahih al-Bukhari, we know exactly that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did that. Uh, Ibn Ishaq came after Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by about 75 years. He was a good man. He said, you know what, let's collect what is said about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, amongst what he collected were the correct hadith of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that we have now in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim. But he collected every crazy story that also was said about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I liken it to someone going to a newsstand and getting the most credible Washington Post and New York Times and also the tabloids that Elvis Brisley is still alive and this alien from outer space that, you know what, given free cash. So he gathered all that. What the Muslim bashers and haters do is that they go only to the stories that we know totally not credible. One of them is the satanic verses uh, uh, story, which is Salman Rushdie authored the uh, uh, a book about uh, uh, as if the devil was says Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when the, uh, with the uh, infidels of Mecca came to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said you know what we want to cut a deal with you because Islam was expanding uh, you know so exponentially you worship our gods for one year and we worship Allah for one year and by that deal then we you know we can you know coexist in peace and the answer to that was the famous surah in the Quran قُلْ يَا الْكَافِرُونَ لَا عَبْدُ مَا تَعْبُدُونَ so, Prophet Muhammad refused. The satanic verse of the story is that he was possessed by the devil or the jinn, and he told them, all right, and he went to the Muslims and told, let's all worship the idols of Quraysh. Of course, such a story was never heard by any of the companions of Prophet Muhammad was never told by hundreds of the companions of Prophet Muhammad was never seen saying it, but they just claimed so. And actually, I met someone who was debating me and said, you know what? Uh, I believe that Muhammad was a man وسلم, with good intentions, but what he thought was the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was actually the devil himself. And I couldn't stop myself from smiling. I told him, you know what? Let's see what that devil inspired, if that's true. You know, the Prophet to say, do not cheat, do not steal, do not kill, do not lie, be righteous, help everyone, be curious to everyone. I told him, that's a well behaved devil from a very good family. <laughs> But that's the crazy stories that they have. SubhanAllah. Any other questions? Uh, how do we respond to people, um, especially you know, with all the media coverage on it, on like uh, Islam or like the Sharia's perspective on human rights? Because people say like, oh, like in Iran or like you see cases or like uh, in other, other countries, oh, this person is getting stoned or this person is doing this. But some, I've heard some scholars say there's a moratorium. Some say, some say it's not part of Islam, some say it is. Like how do you respond? All right. Uh, one of the
the things that they scare people with is Sharia law. Sharia means law, so they scare people with the law law. Uh, they look, go at rural areas, ten villages in Pakistan and Afghanistan, and show a woman being stoned or someone being executed, and this is Sharia law for you. Right? One of the biggest myths out there, and we need to know this. So when somebody brings these subjects, we don't run away or shy away. We actually say, thank you for telling me this, let me tell you the truth. Right? First of all, they claim that stoning is a Muslim thing. That Muslims are crazy and they go against women. SubhanAllah. There's the Old Testament, which is the Torah and the, 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 the scriptures for the uh, Jews. There's the New Testament and there's Islam. These are the three main Ibrahimic religions. Go and write these things down. Deuteronomy 22.22. Leviticus 20.10. Speaks specifically about stoning adulterers. In the English translation it says kill them, but actually in Hebrew and in Aramaic and the Greek text, it stoned them. Right? So, it's not invented by Muslims. Second thing, let's go to Christianity. The famous story that was inserted in the Gospel of John. Whoever was without a sin should cast the first stone. They brought what is supposed to be a prostitute to Jesus, peace be upon him, and said she was found committing adultery, deal with her. And supposedly, Jesus, peace be upon him, said, whoever was without a sin should, and quote, cast the first stone. What is casting a stone? In the dictionary, I guess it's stoning. So stoning was prevalent all over Judaism till the time of Jesus, peace be upon him. Muslims did not invent stoning. Now, we go to stoning in Islam. There's two things, and you know, you need to explain that to people. Not only that we can quote you from the Quran and the Hadith of Prophet Muhammad but let's examine history itself. Because people can claim, you know, beautiful utopian, utopian texts like, you know, communism for example. Communism would tell, you know, fair distribution of resources and fair treatment to all people. But when it was applied, it was absolute evil on earth. Right? Let's look what happened with stoning. How many adulterers were caught in the act and stoned? in the first, not 100 years of Islam, but the first 1,000 years of Islam, the first millennium of Islam. Can anyone tell? People that were caught according to the rules for men or for women, saw them committing the act and they were caught and actually they were stoned. I gave you 1,000 years. How many? Any guess? Come on, guys. No. No. Zero. Never in the first 1,000 years of Islam, the Prophet, the companion, the followers, the followers of the followers, a thousand years, that two adulterers, according to the condition of Islam, were caught committing adultery. They have to be four people watching the act simultaneously. If three of them saw it and went and testified, they will be punished, the same punishment that they want to apply on the adulterers. They have to be four, and the four simultaneously, you know, bring the crime to the ruler, and then prosecution or conviction can follow. The entire first thousand years of Islam, three people were stoned for adultery. The three were adamant confessions. Woman came to Prophet Muhammad and said, I committed adultery. He said, you might have not, and he turned his face the other way. She said, no, I did. He said, you might just maybe kiss the guy or you know, hug him and you think that's adultery. She said, no, I'm pregnant. Prophet Muhammad told her, you know what, go give birth and then come back later. Gave her every excuse not to be punished for it. She came back after delivery. And Prophet Muhammad told her, you know what, go breastfeed him for the two years, al fatan and then come back after two years. The woman came back with the boy carrying a piece of bread in his hand, meaning that he can independently feed himself, and he does not need breastfeeding. Only then, Prophet Muhammad applied the punishment upon her. That's stoning in Islamic law. Why stoning? Why hitting someone with stones till death? First of all, death is death. Lethal injection, uh, gelatine, you know, hanging by the neck. Death is death. So there's no difference. Why is it that way? And why it has to be done in public? Because adultery is a cancer of societies. Why? What, what do I mean by cancer of societies? Here they tell you, you know what? It's too concerning adults and, you know, you know, we're not hurting anyone, we're not bothering anyone. But what happens is, why would I go spend all that money and court up a young lady and go to her family and marry and spend money with children and have all these tremendous responsibilities? And I have five kids and I know what that means. And while I can jump from a bar to a bar to a bar and, you know, and I'm not responsible to anyone. And have all these illegitimate children and, you know, I can dodge it, whatever. Why, why bother with it?